The liver lies adjacent to the lower ribs, the undersurface of the diaphragm, and straddles the vena cava posteriorly. Most of the liver bulk lies to the right of the midline, where the lower border coincides with the right costal margin, but extends as a wedge to the left of the midline between the anterior surface of the stomach and the left dome of the diaphragm. The surface projection on the anterior body wall extends up to the fourth intercostal space on the right and the fifth space on the left. The liver is invested with peritoneum except on the posterior surface where the peritoneum reflects onto the diaphragm, forming the right and left triangular ligaments. The undersurface of the liver is concave and extends down to a sharp anterior border. Despite the complex internal anatomy of the liver, it is devoid of many external markings. Intraoperatively, the most obvious markings are the ligamentum teres and the gallbladder. The ligamentum teres occupies the anterior and inferior border of the falciform ligament and contains the obliterated umbilical vein. The falciform ligament, which is not shown in this picture, is a thin membrane that runs posteriorly from the ligamentum teres to meet the triangular ligament centrally at the suprahepatic inferior vena cava. The continuation of the ligamentum teres on the undersurface of the liver is an obvious marking and is called the umbilical fissure. The umbilical fissure contains the end branches of the inflow portal pedicles to the left liver. The hepatic veins drain directly from the upper part of the posterior surface of the liver. The left and middle hepatic veins may drain separately into the inferior vena cava, but are usually joined after a short extrahepatic course to form a common venous channel some two centimeters in length, which enters to the left part of the anterior surface of the inferior vena cava below the diaphragm. The right hepatic vein, which is somewhat larger than the left and middle hepatic veins, has a short extrahepatic course of approximately one centimeter. Below the liver, the inferior vena cava lies behind the duodenum and head of the pancreas, passing upwards behind the foramen of Winslow, posterior to the right hilar structures of the liver. Behind the liver, the inferior vena cava is embraced in a groove on its posterior surface. The inferior vena cava comes to lie on the right crus of the diaphragm behind the bare area of the liver and then extends to the central tendon of the diaphragm, which it pierces on a level with the body of the T8 vertebra, to then enter the right atrium. Above the level of the renal veins, there are usually no caval tributaries posteriorly. Posteriorly, a fibrous ligament courses between the caudate lobe and the posterior aspect of the right liver. This structure is known as the caval ligament. The caudate lobe embraces the left side of the vena cava on its posterior surface and lies within the omental bursa posterior to the lesser omentum and the left hemi liver. There are additional posterior inferior draining hepatic veins with a short course into the anterior surface of the inferior vena cava and these may be large. Examples of these veins are seen here as small posterior chordate veins and accessory right hepatic veins. The main bile duct is divided into two segments. The upper segment is called the common hepatic duct and is situated above the cystic duct which joins it to form the common bile duct. The confluence of the right and left hepatic ducts takes place at the right of the hilus anterior to the portal venous bifurcation and overlying the origin of the right portal vein. The extrahepatic segment of the right duct is short but the left duct has a much longer extrahepatic course. The biliary confluence is separated from the base of the liver by the hilar plate, which is the fusion of connective tissue enclosing the biliary and vascular elements within Glisson's capsule. It is possible to open this connective tissue to display the biliary confluence and in particular the left hepatic duct. The accessory biliary apparatus, which constitutes a reservoir, comprises the gallbladder and cystic duct. The right liver and the left liver are respectively drained by the right and left intrahepatic ducts, whereas the caudate lobe is drained by several ducts draining into the central portions of the right and left hepatic ducts. The intrahepatic ducts are tributaries of the corresponding hepatic ducts which form part of the major portal triads. 
The common description of the arterial supply to the liver and biliary tree is only present approximately 60% of the time. The common hepatic artery arises from the celiac trunk and passes forward and to the right along the superior border of the pancreas. At the hepatic hilum, it lies anterior to the portal vein and to the left of the bile duct. At the point that the common hepatic artery begins to head superiorly towards the hepatic hilum, it gives off the gastroduodenal artery and then the right gastric artery. The common hepatic artery beyond the takeoff of the gastroduodenal is called the proper hepatic artery and divides into right and left branches below the hilum. The left hepatic artery heads vertically towards the umbilical fissure to supply the left liver and usually gives off a middle hepatic branch that heads towards the right side of the umbilical fissure and supplies segment 4 of the left liver. The right hepatic artery usually runs posterior to the common hepatic bile duct and in rare instances anteriorly. It then runs through Callow's triangle where it gives off the cystic artery to supply the gallbladder and then branches into sectoral arteries before passing into the substance of the right liver. Hepatic arterial anatomy is extraordinarily variable and accessory or replaced branches to the liver originating from the left gastric or the superior mesenteric arteries are very common. The details of this aberrant anatomy are illustrated in the text. The portal vein forms behind the neck of the pancreas at the confluence of the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. Cephalad to the point of its formation, the portal vein passes behind the first portion of the duodenum and into the hepatoduodenal ligament, where it runs along the right border of the lesser omentum, usually posterior to the bile duct and hepatic artery. The portal vein divides into main, right and left branches at the hilum of the liver. The left branch of the portal vein runs transversely along the base of the left liver and into the umbilical fissure, where it gives off its segmental branches. The left portal vein also gives off posterior branches to the left side of the caudate lobe. The right portal vein has a short extrahepatic course and usually enters the substance of the liver where it splits into its sectoral branches. There is usually a small branch of the right portal vein or at the bifurcation of the vein that comes off posteriorly to supply the caudate process. The functional anatomy of the liver is composed of eight segments which are each supplied by a single portal triad or pedicle composed of a portal vein, hepatic artery and bile duct branch. These segments are further organized into four sectors that are separated by caesuri containing the three main hepatic veins. The four sectors are further organized into the right and left liver. The terms right and left liver are preferable to right and left lobe because there is no external marking that allows the identification of the right and left liver. The main caesura is illustrated and runs in the vertical plane of the middle hepatic vein. This plane runs in an anterior-posterior direction from the gallbladder fossa to the left side of the vena cava and divides the liver into right and left hemilivers. The line of the main caesura is also known as Cantley's line. The right and left liver, demarcated by this main caesura, are independent in terms of portal and arterial vascularization and of biliary drainage. The right liver is divided into an anterior and posterior sector by the right caesura that runs in the plane of the right hepatic vein. The right portal pedicle composed of the right hepatic artery, portal vein and bile duct split into an anterior and posterior pedicle that supply the segments of the anterior and posterior sectors. The left caesura is located posterior to the ligamentum teres and runs in the plane of the left hepatic vein. The left liver is therefore split into an anterior and posterior sector by the left caesura. Having divided the liver into two hemilivers and four sectors, the liver is now further divided into eight segments, each of which has its own independent inflow portal pedicle. The caudate lobe is labelled segment 1, and is the dorsal portion of the liver embracing the inferior vena cava on its posterior surface and lying posterior to the left portal triad inferiorly and the left and middle hepatic vein superiorly. The main bulk of the caudate lobe is to the left of the IVC but inferiorly it traverses between the cava and the left portal triad where it fuses to the posterior sector of the right liver. This part of the caudate lobe is known as the right portion of the caudate process. 
The left portion of the caudate lobe lies in the lesser mental bursa and is covered anteriorly by the gastrohepatic ligament that separates it from the left liver anteriorly. The left liver is composed of segments 2, 3 and 4. Segment 4 has been further split into segments 4a and 4b based on independent inflow portal pedicles to these segments. Recall that the left liver is split in the plane of the left hepatic vein into an anterior and posterior sector. The left anterior sector is composed of segments 3 and 4, while the left posterior sector is composed of segment 2, the only sector composed of a single segment. The right liver is composed of segments 5, 6 and 7 and 8. Recall that the right liver is split in the plane of the right hepatic vein into an anterior and posterior sector. The anterior sector is composed of segment 5 inferiorly adjacent to the gallbladder and segment 8 superiorly. The posterior sector contains segment 6 inferiorly and segment 7 superiorly. A further understanding of the left liver is illustrated. One can define the liver in the plane of the umbilical fissure and falciform ligament as shown. The umbilical fissure does not contain a caesura but rather contains the inflow pedicle to the left liver. This divides the liver into a left lateral segment containing segments 2 and 3 and a left medial segment containing segment 4. In practice, the three-dimensional anatomy of the liver must be interpreted from cross-sectional imaging. The following images demonstrate typical images of the liver at varying levels, starting cephalad and proceeding inferiorly. This image shows the superior portion of the liver. Note that the caudate lobe, segment 1, extends superiorly as it straddles the vena cava. The right and left liver are defined by the plane of the middle hepatic vein, which is marked by the line between segments 4 and 8. Note the right hepatic vein separating segment 7 from segment 8. Similarly, the left liver is defined by the left hepatic vein, separating segments 2 and 3. Segment 4 is separated from segments 2 and 3 by the umbilical fissure, which is not seen on this image. At this level, the right anterior pedicle is evident along with its branches to segment 5. Below the level of the hilus, the segments visible in the right liver are segments 5 and 6, which are also separated by the continuation of the main trunk of the right hepatic vein. Segment 4 is again noted to be separated from segments 2 and 3 by the umbilical fissure. Note that segment 2 is posterior to segment 3 as the liver lies in its normal anatomic position. At the next two levels, the gallbladder is visible and marks the continuation of the terminal branches of the middle hepatic vein and the line of separation of the left and right liver. In the right liver, the posterior pedicle is evident with branches to segment 6. In the left liver, segment 4 is again separated from segment 3 by the umbilical fissure and segment 2 is no longer visible. At this inferior most view, it is evident that the right liver hangs down the lowest. Segments 5 and 6 are separated by the distal branches of the right hepatic vein. In the left liver, only the inferiormost tip of segment 4 is visible at this level.